All right, welcome back, welcome back to the weekend wrap up. I am Rudy the Dude. I love us, I love us. We are great, we are great. Let's keep doing great things. Let's keep doing great things. Hey, the kids are watching. The kids are watching. And I'm excited about this this um this segment right here, this episode. Put your money where your mouth is. But first, let me do a little disclaimer. One, I am not a financial wizard. I'm an everyday working man. Okay? So I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial wizard. I'm not a I won't say I'm not a uh, financial prophet or uh, any of those type of things. I'm just putting theories out there and ideas as well as sticking to my gimmicks because the kids are watching. And therefore, little boy, little girl, understand Big Bank can take Little Bank, but Big Bank won't even concern itself about Little Bank if Little Bank people are going to Big Bank. Or better yet, Alabama. Let's think about football for a second. If you send all the the um, all the top five athletes to Alabama, and then you complain about Alabama State is not able to go against Alabama, compete against Alabama, well, what's the majority of that? Who are the majority of the athletes? Okay, now, let's get into a couple of words. Um, first word, fad. Well, well, no, 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 no. Let's start with trend. What is trend? A definition. I wrote it down. Yes. Trend is a general direction in which something is developing or changing. Okay. Okay. Now, um, in my high school, we would... In my high school, it was you either was wearing. Um, it went from K Swiss to to soldieries to Eastlands, then to polo boots, and then it just stayed in between those three. And now Air Max. Then of course Jordans took over everything. Trend. Fad, fad, definition. Any form of collective behavior that develops within a culture, a generation, or a social group in which a group of people enthusiastically follow an impulse for a short period. <sighs> hmm. A fad. You uh, now everybody's uh, you know I I've been checking out the scene every now and then. I'm not back on the market yet, but I'll be checking out the scene. And you know he is you know he went from uh, boss to um, a king to a um, to a I don't know, but now you got alpha beta. Um, um, what else is out there? I don't know. Help me out. But it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. You know, this is a fad, and it's amazing that in the fad, in the fad, it's only temporary. And when there's something positive, like each one teach one, um, college education is important. Um, Act like you have some common sense. Act like you have some manners. Act like you have some type of behavior structure. Something happened. Maybe that's why people, a lot of people are standing on anything to fall for it. Maybe that's why a lot of people are standing on nothing to fall for anything. Everybody want to be led. And even the honor roll students are still enriching the class clowns. 
But please don't let me go too far. I digress. There's this other word called sacrifice because you see, the world is not going to respect us. We can scream all day, Black Lives Matter. Yes, we know Black Lives Matter. But do we show the world that Black Lives Matter? Every opportunity there is, we or do we, people do people, individual. You know what? Let's keep it back. We, let's bring one back. Let's bring one back. We're not focusing on people, kids. We focusing on theories. The choices. Theory of choices. Look, you have an opportunity to act like this when you step outside because, let's face it, you don't have to say black girl magic. You don't have to say black boy magic. You don't have to say black man rising, black woman rising. Hell, people see you black. I'm probably going a little bit too far. Uh, <laughs> sacrifice. The other word is sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? An act of giving up something value for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. Is the next generation worth it, worthy to you? Is it important for you to tell the truth? To the next generation not what you've been deceived in what's popular in what is broadcasted out there in the media world but the construction part the structure part the progressive part the everyday acting like a human being a civilized human being and also furthering the career that you have chose or the career that have chose you. No, that don't sound right because look, everybody have a choice of what they want to do. It's about work ethics. It's what is that W word work. You got to work to get where you want. And speaking of working to get to you want where you want to be, you know, we're gonna start with a little bit of history, and we're gonna start with Mr. George Johnson. Now, y'all yeah, probably heard of this individual before, or you probably have not. But it's my job to let the kids know and let the parents know as well, so they can tell the kids about this individual as well. And much love to Madame C.J. Walker. And here go Mr. George Johnson. Afro Sheen. Hmm, hmm. The roots of the Johnson, the roots of Johnson products weave a story rich in Black American history, as a testament to the American dream. The story begins in Richland, Mississippi, in 1927. George Ellis Johnson was born in a three-room sharecropper shack. After his parents divorced, two-year-old George and his mother Priscilla moved to Chicago. As soon as he was old enough, George started shining shoes and selling bottles as selling bottles he collected to help keep food on the table. As he got older, as he got older, he waited tables and set pens in a bowling alley. Midway through high school, he left to work full time for the Fuller Products Company, a black owned cosmetic firm. A simple beginning, years of hard work perseverance at the formulation of a dream. In 1954, George Johnson borrowed $250 from a bank and another $250 from a friend and launched his own company, Johnson Products, the first hair care brand developed specifically for black American hair. The company's first product was Ultra Wave, a hair relaxer for men. In 1957, Ultra Sheen was introduced as a hair relaxer for women. During the next quarter century, more product lines were introduced like Afro Sheen. In the most recognizable Johnson Products brand of all, the Ultra Sheen hairdress line. In 1981, that was a great year, the company introduced Gentle Treatment, the first no-lie conditioning relaxer on the, ma on the market. In 1989, the Gentle Treatment expanded 
by adding formulas designed specifically for gray hair. As a result of the enormous success and continuing growth of the company, in 1971, Johnson Product became the first minority-run business listed on the New York Stock Exchange. In 2003, Johnson Products became a part of the Procter & Gamble family. The long-standing heritage and proven success through more than two decades of acquisition and mergers is a testament to the strength of Johnson Product brands. Johnson Product has remained a trusted brand for more than half a century, developed by Black American for Black Americans. Johnson Products continue to reinforce its ties to the community. Since 1960, the company has spent nearly all of its advertising dollars in Black-owned publications like Ebony and Jet Magazine. It expanded into ethnic radio and became the first advertiser to sponsor a nationally syndicated television show, TV's Trend Sitting Soul Train. Today, the company continues to develop hair care products of the highest caliber to meet the ever-changing needs and desires of Black American clients. Mr. Joyce Johnson, everybody. And just to, just to um, update you on a little bit, it is no longer um, a part of, it's no longer a subsidiary of Procter & Gamble. A bunch of, um, a unanimous group of black investors have can, according to Wikipedia, have purchased it from, from Procter & Gamble. So it's no longer with Procter & Gamble. Which say which further let me um which further makes me wanna um say to parents, those who are building an empire, please, please make sure that your kids understand work ethics. And you know, we want them to enjoy the fruits of our labor. That's off top. However, if I'm gonna tell if I'm gonna tell my child, look. When I pass away, this is your business. Sell it before you let it go bankrupt. Okay? Because now our last name is a brand. <sighs> you know, like I said, we want our kids to enjoy the fruit of our labor, but however, we want them to Make sure their kids and have a clear understanding that this is general. This is what we call generation wealth. It wouldn't be nice in 2022, founded in 2022, and still ran under the name uh, in 2113 or 2122. It's still a family owned business. Oh, and also for Ebony Magazine, um, once again, like I said last year, and I think it was episode... Sometimes it's hard for me to explain things, but I believe in being a good steward. And I want to say a big thank you to Mr. Bridgman, former, former NBA player and the owner of Bridge Sports and Media for purchasing Ebony Magazine, Ebony Magazine, buying it out of bankruptcy. Thank you. That is a home brain name that should never ever been in that situation. However, things happen and we must learn from that. But thank you, Bridge Sports Media, Bridgman Sports and Media and C V Group and the C V G group for buying buying Ebony Magazine and Jet Magazine. Ebony Publishing out of bankruptcy. Thank you. Now, now let's talk. Now let's talk about this. Um, let's use a couple of other words as well, because there's this thing when we say black owned. You know, sometimes people use that as a gimmick. It is, and it is absolutely horrendous. Absolutely, I mean, 
once again, everybody has a gimmick. So therefore, kids, uh, remember you have a choice, and you have a choice to use your brain as well. Now, listen to this word, parent company. Well, let me say term. Listen to this term, parent company. Now listen to this other term, subsidiary. Okay? Chief executive officer does not necessarily mean you own the company. You can be the founder, but you can sell majority of your shares, majority of your equity to an investor, and they can become the owner. It's for the majority. Now, a parent company, as defined, is a company that owns more than 50% of the outstanding voting shares of another company. Therefore, it controls the other company or companies and can directly influence the business operation or tech take a more hands-off approach on ownership. A subsidiary, a company controlled by a holding company, AKA parent company. So many people, you know, just just think about that kids. Just think about that, just think about that because a lot of people like to say independent black owned. And you know, if some people sometimes people would have done their homework, done their homework, they would have figured out that nah, you work for somebody else. And then that's another story, but I, I don't want to digress. I'm, I'm excited about talking about finance. Is it's just a part of really do your own work really use use this your brain really use it and think put some thought into it how can you be how can you say independent black owned and you are owned by sony priority records universal music so it goes on it goes on it goes on and on Procter and gamble Johnson and Johnson. Let's stop. Let's stop this. Now, now, I would like to address this as well. You know, earlier I spoke about earlier I spoke about big bank take little bank, and you know, in self in the part about. If the world is not going to respect you if you don't respect yourself. So, kids, next time everybody's screaming protest or, you know, um, boycott, you, you think about everything that's boycotted about you that reflects you. Colleges, HBCUs. I know it's a high subject, but the analogy is real. Restaurants. And don't and then on top of that, you know, somebody and I'm about to get to the main part, banks. Black owned banks. As well as stocks. As well. But first off, you know, um I, let me look at it from both sides. One side is that okay, from a consumer standpoint. This is a small bank. It's black owned, and I want to support it. However, it's charging me fees, monthly fees. Hi, but this bank, which is international, which is internationally known, is not charging me any fees. Well, let's bring back this word sacrifice. If majority of us would have taken our hard-earned money and put it into this bank and don't get me wrong everybody's gonna need a job this the, the one main part about any business is employing people but when you get out there and start complaining about boycott this boycott that but you don't want to go and spend your money with these individuals 
I mean individuals that look like you. Oh, oh, because they are small. A sacrifice has to be made. Somebody has to start now. It just don't happen overnight. These empires wasn't built overnight. Okay? Sacrifice. And not just that. Don't let it just be a fad. Don't let it just be a fad because there's a lot of fads that came in and out of our quote unquote community slash culture. And now it seems like dignity in. Mm, I don't want. <laughs> Woo! Well, I'm the owner, so I'm the operator, so. Let me just say this. The world back to back to the main part. The world is watching us as the world is watching us. As well as the kids are watching us. And the kids gonna reiterate, recreate, reinvent. Or better, I won't even say reinvent. I would just say modify in it or enhance whatever we do. You see how wild these kids? You see the reflection. Now let's do something about it. And as always, once again, my gimmick, I'm selling to the kids. And I'm selling through the parents as well. So they have to know. They have a choice. Okay? Now, as far as the banks are concerned, now there are 15 banks that I can name off the top of my head. However... I'm going to put my money where my mouth is because I'm excited. I'm excited. And let me just say why. Because one, I'm well, I'll, let me start with this one. Last summer, I took my daughter down to New Orleans. And I took a, I, this is what we call an economic conscience. Everywhere we went was a black restaurant. Dizzy's. On um, Explanade. Uh, the catfish plate, the catfish, uh, the catfish platter. Uh, me and my daughter, we loved it. And then we went down to instead of going to all the fancy, uh, I want to say not even fancy, the um, local, the well, I won't even say local now, uh, the big commercial grocery stores. I took her down to the Ninth Ward Market. You know, it's the part of not first off not being afraid afraid to go into places where we look at we well people look like us, as well as spending money with people that look like us. The little the little juice stand under Claiborne Bridge. You know, I honestly it, that was just a proud. I it, honestly as a father, that was, it was just a proud father moment for me. But I, but the whole part is just putting your money where your mouth is. You know, you don't have to pro, you don't have to march, you don't have to scream, you don't even have to scream boycott. Let your actions show. Let your actions show. I'm talking to it, and I'm talking to everyday working people. As you can see, the celebrities, the celebrities, entertainers, all them athletes, all them. Trust me. They want to protect their brand. And like being the CEO of the company, yeah, you'll get your bonus. I'll give you a million dollar bonus as long as you bring me in a billion. Or look at, or let me um, interpret, uh, translate it like this Project Pat best said, said it best. Take me all the way to fame. I'm going to let you run your game. But if it don't profit us, That'll bring a pimp to shame. Now, there are seven public traded stock, black owned stocks into in the market. And you know what? Let me um, just say it like this. Now, some of these things are not, some of these stocks may not be attractive. It's up to you to do your own homework. But, <laughs> if I if I 
have you ever read this book called also have you ever read this book called Diamond Ashante The Rise of Jamaica no brewery brewery in Jamaica check it out it's on Amazon you know it's a, it's a book about stock investing as well as green melon and the part of taking over a company or the part of um, pretty much taking over a company check it out the book is on Amazon but seven publicly traded black owned stocks to invest in we have Carver Bancorp Carver Bancorp Incorporated common stock also called Carver Federal Savings Bank is a holding company which engages in the provision of consumer and commercial banking services it closed on Friday at $7.40 and when I say Friday, just keep in mind, I'm speaking about Friday the 25th, February 25th. Okay. All right. Let's keep it going. Urban One, founded and chaired by Madame Kathy Hughes. Urban One Incorporated, formerly Radio One, is an urban-oriented multi-media company. Okay. Now, check it out. They have two stocks under the ticker. Oh, they have two stocks. One under the ticker U1. And the other one under U1K. Okay. Um, one is a class A. One is a class D. Stock. Both of them are common stocks though. So you can purchase it on the NASDAQ. Alright. U1 closed at $5.39. And U1K closed at $4.39 on Friday. Now, I don't want to keep on repeating Friday, February 25th, 2022, but when I say on Friday, that's what I mean. Now, let's continue on. Founded and chaired by Robert L. Johnson and Thomas J. Baltimore, RLJ Lodging Trust is an independent equity real estate investment trust that also manages real estate funds. It closed at $14.37. Pair Georgia. Mr. H. E. Perry, C Citizen Bank Share Corporation operates as the holding company for Citizen Trust Bank that provides commercial banking products and services. It closed at eleven dollars and twenty-five cents. Now, keep in mind, this is that stock is not on Nasdaq or on um, or on um, the New York Stock Exchange. Is over the counter market, which they try to call is which they is, will say it's a pink sheet, pretty much saying that it's not getting many, um, it's not getting many volumes moved around for it to stay on the NASDAQ or the um, or on the mainstream New York, um, a stock exchange. However, there are 10 black owned asset management companies. There are six investment banks, black owned six investment banks, and there are eight private equities. We gotta work together. We got we have to work together. But I digress. We got three more stocks to talk about. And founded and chaired by Dr. Harriet Thibodeau. Axon Therapeutic Incorporation is a biopharmaceutical company that engaged in developing therapy for the management of central nervous system disorder, closing at $28.19. Broadway Financial Corp. is a bank holding company. The company is engaged in the savings and loan business. It is the last remaining traditionally black community-oriented bank headquarter west of Dallas. It closed at $1.70. Founded and chaired by Mark Walker and Keith Smith, Direct Digital Holdings is a holding company. The company provides end-to-end full-serving programming advertising platform primarily focused on providing advertising technology, data-driven campaign, and other solutions to underserved and less resourceful markets on both the buy and sell side of the digital advertising sector. It closed at $1.55. You know, I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm excited because it gives me opportunity not just to 
support, but also invest. You know, to three of those three of those banks, three of those banks are also on the um, Black Enterprise Top 100 list, I believe, from 2020. I believe that was the last one they did. But it gives me an opportunity to not only support, but invest, as I said, because I can open up an account as well as invest in the company. You know, and that 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 right there is unique. I guess that's just like the same way of saying if you have an Apple product, you might as well go and invest in the stock as well. But however, I'm sure all the savvy investors will say, well, Rudy, they don't, their, their stock is this price. Nobody's paying attention to it. Exactly. 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 Think about it. And then on top of that, what they can do for us. Well, guys that look like me or thinking like me right now. If I can get a million other guys to think like that think like this then anyway but also I do uh, I do bank with uh, but one of the other banks I do bank with they just actually they just run the bell uh, run the bell uh, Liberty Bank and Trust out of New Orleans so I'm, I'm excited I'm excited I'm even more excited about this Cadiz Capital Holdings is a private equity firm focused on North American companies with enterprises values between $250 million to $1 billion. We ha they have the ability to pursue larger transactions in collaboration with strategic, like-minded partners. Cadiz was founded by veterans of the investment banking, private equity, private equity technology, and the healthcare industry. They seek out opportunities where they are able to drive growth and expansion. This includes partnering with proven and motivated management teams to create value through deployment of strategic capital and operational insight. By leveraging um, by leveraging their extensive network of relationships, they are able to bring significant expertise to the investment process across a broad range of sectors, especially within their preferred industry. In 2018, Joe Sicala founded the Dream Exchange. The Dream Exchange. The Dream Exchange to solve these long-standing market problems by creating a stock exchange to become completely inclusive and expand access to capital markets for companies with great imagination and foresight into the future as well as make an impact on the lacking diversity in the capital market. The Black-owned private equity, Cadiz Capital Holdings, enter an agreement to become the majority owner in Dream Exchange. Oh, there go that word. Majority owner, meaning parent company, meaning we run it. Thus creating the first black owned stock exchange in the history of America. Now let's, be, now let's go back to this word sacrifice. Let's go back to this word sacrifice. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I will sacrifice. I will sacrifice. And if, if, it, and if there is a if, just know, I just know, I stood proud. And I stood believing that we can do this we can make a better future you know a lot of people like to talk about Tulsa Greenwood but you got to understand talk Greenwood wasn't just built overnight people came in and did the work but here we are in 2022 here we are
I'm gonna see y'all next week. I will see y'all next week because you don't understand. I ain't scared of you, mother. Let me just say this. Let me see what I mean. Let me just put that disclaimer out there. I am not a financial advisor. I am not a, I am not a financial wizard. I'm not a guru. I'm not, I don't have any certifications in this. I'm just an everyday working man that pays bills. But I do have a finance degree and I do have common sense and I am watching and observing as, as the rest of the world as well. You know, like I said, everybody loves a drug dealer, but nobody likes a crackhead or a meth head or an addict. Everybody likes a gangster. Everybody likes the gangster image. But nobody likes stray bullets hitting their house or stray bullets doing other things. Everybody likes won't everybody likes the Wall Street villain. But nobody likes to see their life savings be taken away from them or stolen from them. Content of character. The character of content. Nah, that didn't make any sense. But the content of the character. The world will respect us when we start showing respect to ourselves and appreciate ourselves. <laughs>